Hi everyone and welcome to week five of our course. It's kind of hard to believe but we're already hitting uh, that midterm mark and I feel like things are going to go really 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 quickly. Um, but this is an exciting week because this is the week that you're going to write your first blog post. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Your first blog post is going to be a listicle. Now listicles are the absolute um, workhorse of anybody who has to do any feature writing, whether you're a blogger, whether you're a journalist who writes feature content, um, you could be a um, online publication, you could be a print magazine, you could be a press release writer, and you need a good headline for that, and lists are great. Lists are great because audiences like lists. People like to know what they're going to get out of reading your article. So if I know, oh, I'm going to get seven tips, that's pretty manageable, right? So it, it gives you this sort of structure um, as a reader um, that seems manageable and seems doable. Now, as the writer, the same thing is also true because when you do a listicle, you are automatically you know, breaking up and creating scannability for your post because it's a naturally chunky process to write a listicle. Um, listicles may have gotten a little bit of a bad rap uh, back when, like, let's say BuzzFeed and when um, online, you know, click ads were at their height, maybe like five years ago, and clickbait really became an issue, and listicles got thrown under the bus a little bit, and people said, oh, well, BuzzFeed invented this kind of article, and they really didn't. Everybody's been using listicles forever because it's really, um, it really works, and again, it really is a workhorse. Uh, for bloggers and for people who have to create a lot of content. So exactly how many items do you need to make a list? Really, you need more than two. So three is your minimum. Uh, you can certainly do, I did have a student once who did 101 like places to visit or you know before you die or something like that, but that was a little bit more extreme. So you can do three, uh, five, seven, nine, you can do any number. If you have four steps, it's four. If you have six, it's six. So some of the more common numbers really are three, seven, 10, 12, you know, 15. I probably wouldn't go much higher than 12 um, or 15, but you know, that's really up to you and it's really up to the subject matter. Now, in addition to your first listicle, um, writing that, you're also going to find some outbound links that you can use within your blog post. So let me say a few important things about that. There's four key points. So the first is that outbound linking really is a convention of blogging, and this wasn't always the case. Um, back in like the early, probably in the early 2000s, people felt like, oh, well, we shouldn't be you know, sending our readers or our audience anywhere else because what if they don't come back? So they come back. <laughs> and the point is, is that actually adding in outbound links just boosts your credibility. That's really um, one of the key reasons why you do want to include some outbound links um, in your post. It, you know, you're saying, oh, I didn't make this up, you know, or here's some statistics and here's where I got it. So you're really showing your audience that you are credible. And you're also saying, hey, you know what, you might want to read more about this. So you're taking care of your informational needs, so to speak. So that's really the first one is the trust and the credibility. Then the second reason is that you are keeping yourself honest, okay? You do not want to use in-text citations or formal bibliographies in your blog post. Um, but you do need to attribute um, and, you know, name the sources where you get your information. And that's where a link um, does that. So the idea is that you want the link to occur where you're mentioning something within the text. So what you don't want to do, now I copied this from a larger article that I had. I took the links out and I copy and pasted just this section here. This would definitely be way too short of a blog post, okay? And um, I'm going to show you how to add those in um, right now. So now, um, I kept these separate. The other thing is you never want to have a, a naked URL. This is just, you don't do that. You also just don't want to lump your sources in at the end. You want it to occur where um, it's relevant. So here I'm going to put 
I'm going to highlight that text. This text is now my anchor text because it's holding, it's going to be holding the link. I choose the link. Um, I make sure I do this in a new window. Okay, now, if you copy and paste with the link already embedded into your anchor text, it might work, especially if you're doing it from Google. Might not work if you're doing it from WordPress. So I always just keep it separate and do it later. But oop, I just hit my lamp. But that's up to you. Okay, um, you can try to copy them up there. But what I, I recommend that you do is at least open the link and make sure it's open in a new window. Okay, now, um, because people get really annoyed if you don't do that. Now, if you, if I wanted to send somebody to an earlier blog post, like, oh, three weeks ago I wrote about this and now I'm doing more, I can link to within my own content and I would do that in here and that's called an inbound link. All right, but right now we're doing the outbound link. I'm gonna add the link. Okay, so now um, it doesn't work until I make the publishing um, happen. Um, and then, um, so here, let's talk about the other reason why. So we have the trust and the credibility. We have the, you are attributing and citing your information within by using the link. The third reason why links are really important is called um, search engine optimization, SEO. Now we're gonna get more into this next week, okay? But what you need to know right now is that your outbound links, when they are good ones, um, will help boost your search engine optimization, meaning help you get up in the ranks on the Google algorithm, okay? Um, and also, um, so that, that works for SEO, but also it's a good promotional tool if you mention the person, and then you can, um, I'm gonna mention her, I, I went and got her LinkedIn profile, and I'm going to put that in. Okay, now, the reason I'm doing that, now I could have just said, I'm gonna open a new window and there's the link. Okay, now I could have just said, I watched this really great webcast, right? And I'm linking to it. So if I don't mention her name, is it that big of a deal? Not really. But um, for promotional reasons, I'm definitely gonna mention her. I'm gonna link because she might be somebody who might be willing to share the blog later. Um, so it, it just might be a good idea to do that. Also, I don't really have, want to get into having to do her lead generation for dummies or her blog at Marketo. Um, I will put in the Marketo. This is a brand link that I'm doing here where I'm just sending her to the home page, just the plain old home page of Marketo in case somebody is interested in that. Okay, now that is a lot of links for her one, um, one paragraph, but it's okay because they're all relevant. Um, I wouldn't necessarily try to do too many more than that. Um, and the other thing is I wouldn't force it either. So if you don't have, like let's just say you're writing something so personal, there just are no um, outbound links, that's okay. But for the most part, you should be able to get two or three outbound links um, in that blog post. And if you're having trouble, I can definitely help. And um, so that's really what you need to know about linking for right now.